Hey guys, thank you for clicking on this video. Before we get started, please hit that like and subscribe button for me. Thank you. A common point of discussion is whether or not you can speed up recovery from one training session to the next training session from maybe a Monday to a Tuesday. So think about it as a college athlete. You might play a game on a Monday night and then you might have to play another game on Tuesday night. So the answer to that question, just like everything else, is maybe we don't know and it depends. So if you look at the body of literature as a whole, typically there's three metrics for uh, recovery that's used. One metric is creatine kinase levels. Another metric is uh, performance metrics, such as a vertical jump or a 10 meter sprint being performed back to this baseline performance level. And then the third metric would be perceived muscle soreness. And then the research looks at four typical primary recovery modalities. One being passive recovery, which is just resting, taking that time to do nothing and recover. Um, active recovery, which is some sort of light jogging, light bicycling, uh, water aerobics, or something that's just light movement to get a little sweat. And there's contrast baths, which is going back and forth from a cold tub and a hot tub. And then there's just cold water immersion, which is just sitting in a cold tub for five to 15 minutes or so. So when you're looking at the literature as a whole, you're gonna see a lot of mixed results. Some studies are gonna show that contrast baths and cold tubs are gonna be the best way to get your creatine kinase levels uh, back to normal. Um, however, creatine kinase levels are considered a marker of tissue damage, though that doesn't necessarily mean that you're recovered from a performance metric. So you might have normal creatine kinase levels, but your vertical jump height is still way below your baseline. Some studies are gonna show you that passive recovery may be better than active recovery when it comes to getting athletes to perform uh, a vertical jump back to their baseline. So it's all gonna be a mix and match, but one thing that's really interesting in a vast majority of the literature is the psychological effect that having these recovery modalities um, for athletes. So when it comes to the metric of perceived muscle soreness, active recovery, uh, cold tubs, and contrast baths seem to all have a beneficial impact on the athlete's perceived muscle soreness. So though the evidence may be inconclusive whether or not some of these modalities work better than other modalities um, from a performance metric standpoint, they all seem to have a beneficial impact psychologically. Therefore, if uh, a team plays a game on a Monday night and plays another game on a Wednesday, Using that Tuesday as a day for active recovery is probably a good thing because most of these athletes are going to say they feel better and more prepared to play rather than if you took the day off. So if you're someone that's wondering whether or not you should use your off day as an active recovery day or if you have access to cold tubs, whether or not you should use them, I wouldn't steer you away from it. Um, you're probably better off doing something and getting that psychological benefit. Um, than doing nothing and then thinking, oh, you wasted a day. Like I stated earlier, the evidence is inconclusive. That's not the same as there is no evidence. Um, that's two different statements. And it probably depends on the individual a lot more than anything else. So I think if you enjoy cold tubs, contrast baths, or doing something um, like an active recovery on an off day, go for it. More power to you. What I like to do on an off day is just 10 to 15 minutes of jump rope. Um, some prehab exercises and just kind of getting a little sweat and I feel better the next day and ready to go. Thank you for watching the video. I hope that information is useful. Please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button before you take off. Take care.